All right, political refugees, welcome back. My name is Dave, and I am floating in a sea of political mediocrity between two political parties that are hell-bent on getting their way as the country pretty much goes up in a plume of smoke, figuratively and literally. Uh, for all of you Tulsi Gabbard uh, fans, and I'm one of them, I have gravitated back toward Tulsi, not because she's been making any uh, terrific speeches lately, not because she's been putting out uh, more policy or position papers, um, not even because she's an active member of Congress trying to legislate and hopefully do things for her district. Nope, uh, I'm going back and sort of revisiting Tulsi Gabbard on the campaign trail, because I think I've learned a few things watching her videos uh, in context, and also considering what's going on in our world right now, um, Tulsi Gabbard is a stateswoman. Let me um, play this clip for you here, and uh, I'm going to play it through for a little bit. She's going to talk about some of her friends or people that she knows who she's friends with, who apparently supports President Trump. This is a pretty interesting and uh, illustrative clip. We must. This was how Abraham Lincoln ended that speech that he delivered at a highly divisive time in our country's past. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And he ended that speech by saying, we shall not fail. He didn't say, I shall not fail, or you shall not fail. He said, we shall not and fast, we shall not fail. So this is the challenge to every single one of us of thinking, okay, we shall not fail. How are we going to do this? How are we going to make it happen? And there are choices that we can make every single day to answer that challenge. Yes, it starts with the action that you take at the ballot box but that is certainly not where it ends. It continues with holding leaders in Washington accountable, never letting them forget that the power to hire and fire lies within your hands. It continues with reaching out in our own lives, maybe to someone who uh, voted for a different candidate in the last election or someone who has different views on a certain issue. I hear, I, I spoke to a friend of mine yesterday who said, uh, he said if he posted a picture with President Trump on his Facebook page, he would lose friends and family. They wouldn't talk to him anymore. And I've heard from other people, yeah, Tulsi, I want to come take a picture of you, but I can't post it online because it might offend some people. All right. So here's my take, and here's what I get from Tulsi Gabbard, who quite honestly um, shows me that she's not just um, your average candidate running for president these days. Um, in this portion of her speech, she is advocating for moderation moderation and a word that's similar to moderation is moderate now policy wise tulsi gabbard has some strong views especially on things like regime change war and our war on drugs and the surveillance state um three things by the way that she's very libertarian on where she's not so libertarian in which kind of makes her, uh, you know, not very palatable to Joe Jorgensen and the Libertarian Party is the fact that she's for a $15 per hour wage. Uh, she's also for um, Medicare for All, or at least her version of it, um, which was slightly different, still allows uh, public and private insurance together which I think is the right way to go. And I said so at the time when she came out with that proposal. Of course, I got slammed by people on the left who were just 
I don't know, apoplectic about the fact that, gee, you can't have any <laughs> private insurance because you undermine uh, the public uh, policy and so forth, even though Bernie Sanders allowed for um, private insurance. I'm not sure if the Green Party in their proposal uh, allows for it, but needless to say, getting back to the, the policy positions of Tulsi Gabbard, I mean, it's a hybrid. Okay, there are some things that the left would like. There are some things that the libertarians like. Maybe a few things that the right can admire. The fact that she says she's a hawk on terror, which, you know, you can conflate that to mean some things that I have since backtracked, backpedaled on, because, um, I don't know, she's proud to live here. She loves her country, which, again especially in the current climate. It's almost, you know what's funny is that Tulsi Gabbard gets out of the campaign and all hell breaks loose. Now, COVID had started when she decided to, to call it a campaign, but it seems as though the aloha spirit just lifted and left. <laughs> you want to put that into some kind of a religious context, um, you know, it's it's like the good angels decided to depart. And Tulsi Gabbard here, who's trying to say, you know, I've got a friend who likes President Trump. I can't, you know, he can't post on his page. By the way, Facebook right now under a lot of uh, scrutiny because a whistleblower has come forward and basically stating the obvious, conservatives who are upset about Facebook, rightfully so, because apparently there's shadow banning and scrubbing and all that stuff going on over there. I think you're better off on YouTube, and I do have some issues at times with YouTube, but I think you're you're better off over here at least speaking your mind in a video. Doesn't mean you're going to be monetized, doesn't mean you're going to be a YouTube star, but you might be able to get your message out and then share it on <laughs> platforms that allow you to share it. Um, somebody was telling me about slug.com, S-L-U-G.com, and uh, I'm exploring it because I'm about the free speech. I know there are some on the authoritarian neoliberal left that cry hate speech every five seconds if it's something that they disagree on. Uh, you can't make those statements. The First Amendment was designed for exactly that kind of egregious speech if you read the amendment correctly. So let me get back to Tulsi Gabbard though. Tulsi Gabbard here is advocating for moderation. She is saying that we need to come together. We need to be able to work with people who are different than we are, politically speaking. She was not into the tribal warfare. One of the reasons she voted present uh, during the Trump fake impeachment was that she was sending a message to the establishment that, look, you people over here, you've dug in and you're trying to make a political statement rather than doing something that's um, beneficial to the country. You got losers like AOC who come out and say, oh, yeah, she really needed to step up right now and make a decision. Okay, okay, whatever, AOC. Not that you're trying to be celebrity in chief or whatever you're trying to do, celebrity congresswoman. By the way, she's uh, up for election today. She's got a primary challenger. It will be interesting to see if she can hold on to her seat. Um, the odds on favorite is her, so we'll see. She's, look, she, she turned herself into a brand, so it's a, there's a good chance she's going to win. She's got name ID and so forth. But what Tulsi Gabbard does here as a politician is something very different. She really wants both the left and the right to get together and to figure things out. And that's what I call a moderate, okay? That's a classical moderate that says, your way isn't right, the other guy's way isn't right, but maybe we can come together and find a solution. She is a solution-based politician. And moderates for a long time have been really ridiculed. Oh, you're a squishy moderate. You don't believe in anything. 
No, Tulsi believes in a lot of things. Um, it's just that she understands the political reality, and that's why I kind of understand her endorsement of um, poor old Joe Biden, who can barely get through a sentence. She's probably under the impression, maybe rightfully so, that she can get her foot in the door at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, whether that be in a cabinet post or as a vice president. Uh, the latter, of course, is probably not going to happen. Um, but the former, where she could be part of a cabinet and possibly make a real difference and also have uh, the president's ear and gain valuable experience in a, in a political theater like that, that's the end game. That's the long-term goal. Now, again, I've complained, and uh, my complaint still stands because it's frustrating. Uh, I took it out on Tulsi for a while, but I wanted something to happen this election cycle. I didn't want to wait. 2024? But, again, Tulsi Gabbard is young, what, 39 years old? Um, she's got plenty of time to develop into an even better politician and somebody who will come along, hopefully, when people say, Uncle, I've had enough of the chaos. I don't need the orange man, bombastic, bomb-throwing, no empathy. And I don't need the other party, which says something that it isn't, makes promises that it never keeps, and is running the most establishment candidates it can possibly come up with at the end of a primary, which, again, it's just sad, and it shows that we don't really have a strong democracy or a pure democracy right now. But what I like about Tulsi Gabbard, and what I'm starting to realize being the political refugee floating out in the middle of nowhere, is that I do see, it's like I'm looking at two beaches. There's the right-wing beach over here, and there's a left-wing beach over there. And I'm floating in between the two. Do I really want to go ashore on either beach? You know, I kind of went ashore on the left-wing beach. You know, I toyed around with the Green Party, toyed around with Howie Hawkins. And I'm, I'm being, this full disclosure here, I'm not feeling the green right now. The reason I'm not feeling the green is the majority of Americans don't operate in a Green Party paradigm. And the Green Party would have to go under... Uh, an amazing sort of transformation. And the Greens this election cycle have nominated a pure socialist, somebody who's a socialist, somebody who chose on purpose a vice presidential candidate who's also a socialist. And America, they were ready for an African-American president. Um, they're ready for a woman president, I'm sure, I'm certain of it. They're not ready for a socialist president. Now, again, if you were to educate people and you had plenty of time to do that, uh, you might have a chance to do well in a general election. But people are going to go with moderation. If you ask Tulsi Gabbard, are you a socialist? She's going to say, no, I'm not a socialist. I believe in capitalism but I do believe in controls on things like banking and, um, you know, I'd like to take money away from these corporations and bring it back to communities. So it's not socialism and it's not capitalism purely, it's moderation, it's a hybrid, it's where the left and the right might be able to come together and work together to get things done for the American people. Tulsi Gabbard, too, has said on numerous occasions that she loves this country. That's a non-starter for many on the left, and it also breaks their trust. They no longer can trust her because she said, I love my country, I serve my country, and I love my country. People on the right say, I don't know if I trust her on economic policy and so forth, but there's no doubting that she's a patriot. Now, I've had issues with her when it comes to, well, Tulsi, <laughs> you advocate against regime change war. Uh, if they call you up and you have to fight in one of these regime change wars, 
you're not exactly going to feel warm and fuzzy and great about it because principally you don't agree with the actual mission. So that's always been a point of confusion for me. But Tulsi clarified and said, yeah, we do on occasion um, go on missions, which apparently she approves of, missions that um, target very specifically, hopefully, target uh, terrorist cells in other countries, but it's still fighting an overseas war that doesn't have a mission, doesn't have an end goal, doesn't have any of those things. And I think Tulsi's been critical of those things as well. So she kind of does a little bit of that, you know, threading the needle thing, which it's tough for me because my instinct at this stage is bring the troops home, we'll figure it out. Bring them home. It's a good problem to have. Let's just start right there. But there are so many who are just entrenched in this never-ending quagmire of conflicts that, I don't know, no matter who the president is, you think if Biden gets in, uh, it, it ramps up. Trump, to his credit, tries to slow it down a little bit, and we haven't had a president do that in a while. We thought Obama was going to do it, and Obama was given, you know, a blank check when it comes to which country he wants to drone. So Trump, I think his instincts are, nah, let's spend it at home. Let's, if we're going to spend money. But then on the other end of that is Trump built up the military and spent more money than any president in history. So yeah, um, you can build the military up into this super duper fighting force and maybe use it less, but you're still spending a ton of money that maybe we could um, invest in infrastructure and solving the homelessness crisis and the opioid crisis and the student debt loan crisis and the wage disparity that's out there. And this year, at least you could send people money for the rest of the year. That's what I would do. You don't have to promise it for 2021, but 2020 has sucked so badly that I think you could, you know, send people a check every month until the end of the year. That's what I would do. Tulsi Gabbard, I think she would look at that too. I think Tulsi Gabbard is a hybrid candidate who ends up being the perfect moderate. And I know moderates are not liked within political circles because mostly people associate a moderate with somebody who's squishy, they don't have any convictions, or, you know, a moderate is like a neoliberal or a neoconservative. No, this is the kind of moderate that wants to get things done, that wants to convince their colleagues across the aisle that, yes, I will do this for you if you do this bigger thing for me, and you'll get what you want, I'll get what I want, and in the end, the American people get what they want. That's what makes Tulsi Gabbard uh, a skilled politician who obviously ran in a party that didn't understand her or appreciate her, um, her mistake might have been endorsing Bernie Sanders in 2016. Um, maybe at the end of 2016, at the end of that process, she should have walked away and said, you know what, I don't want this position, uh, leadership position. I just want to be a congresswoman and serve my district. And that may have been a little better in the sense that she might have been able to operate within the DNC, but I don't know. Her type of politics no longer, you know, you would think this is the party of Mike Gravel, uh, but no longer really advocates for anti-war policies. Uh, they just want to manage these conflicts better than the Republicans do while trying to talk the idea of peace. They don't really ever mean it because under Obama, we would have just brought all the troops home and we didn't. And Joe Biden isn't promising to bring all the troops home. On the contrary, the generals are rubbing their hands together. All the insiders within the deep state are all excited that they're going to, you know, John Bolton might get a, a new job. Don't put it past Biden because <laughs> he, he voted for the Iraq war and John Bolton was the architect. In any event, um, I like Tulsi Gabbard's point of view on this is it's, it's different because it, it says we're going to work together. 
we're going to find common ground and we're going to get things done for the American people. Nobody out there is really talking that way. Trump, he's not talking that way. Biden, no, he's going to say, let's go back to the halcyon days of Obama and endless stagflation and bailing out banks and car companies and uh, doing crony capitalism with outfits like Solyndra, if you remember that. I mean, that's what you want? Apparently, people want it because they've been convinced um, that Orange Man is bad. Tulsi Gabbard had a third way, and this is what I need, a third way. I'm trapped in between the two islands on the left and the right, and I just want a candidate to speak to me from the middle and say, we can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You get what you want, I'll get what I want, and we'll get things done for everybody. So again... I think Tulsi Gabbard is the ultimate moderate, and uh, a lot of us didn't see it at the time, and we hate using that word, but that's what she is. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Take care.